I'm Mary Perry. And I am David Zen, and we are unscripted. Completely. Pre-Holy Week, unscripted. So, hey, yes. Dave, how's it going? How's it going? It's going great. Good. You know, this time of year, we're, you're always talking a lot about sheep, you know, and flocks. Okay. So, so um, where do sheep get their hair cut? At the Baba shop. <laughs> Baba shop. Do okay. Harper shop. Ba -ba. You you need a little boomerang too? Here, we get a little boomerang for you. No, no, no. I, I understood it. I just didn't think it was that funny. <laughs> <laughs> that don't that don't let that enter into it whatsoever. The degree of funny has nothing to do with this. Um, if okay, you I just say thought. So. Yes, I thought I would just. Uh, Jump out, um, jump out front there. And you know, since we were just talking about websites, I mean, not that our, our audience would know that we were just talking about websites. And so do you know why the spider turned on its laptop? Because he wanted to go to the web. <laughs> the <answer> first. <laughs> okay. Oh, a year, a year in the making, and I still... Let's go to Joke Delivery 101. <laughs> Struggle. <laughs> oh, I'm, I, I'd like to apologize to my head writer, my writer team, and um, our fans for that. But I'm, I'm going to get there. I think a good year and a half, 18 months, I'm going to hit my stride. Okay. Well, I'm so on. I just, I want to back up here a little bit because... Go ahead some things last week. Uh, one was it was your birthday and I had a trivia question. Hmm. It's not a joke. It's just a legitimate trivia question, a Bible trivia question. It's not a joke. Go ahead. Who is the only woman in the Bible whose age is mentioned? Is it Sarah? It was Sarah. And what was and? how old so how old was she how old did she live hmm. i don't know for sure she was 127. so you win the prize that's it that's it there's no there's no joke no, it was she's the only one to have her age mentioned and i got it you got it and that's it? Okay, so, all right, that's it. Yeah. Huh. Applause here if you want, but there's, there's... All right, so, you know, we really should start out today by mentioning there, one of our top fans does have a birthday today. Oh, who? That would be Alice. You know, oh. Min is watching. She always watches. She Happiest can... of birthday. We don't have a show. Yep. Today is her birthday, so I think we should make a cake for her, or you can send her whatever you want for her. Happy yes. birthday, Alice. Happy birthday, happy birthday, and thank you for your faithfulness, and happiest of birthdays, and God's blessing in the coming year. Yay! Absolutely. Yay! And, and not to out birthday everybody, but Helen's birthday was just a couple of days ago also. Yes, but that was so, not on a day that we were recording, so... No, it wasn't. So our I fans didn't. who had birthdays last week and their birthdays coming up. Happy birthday. I see. I see. I see the rules. I got it. I got you. I got you. We should have a little uh, birthday cake emoji or something. Happy birthday to us. I think we should. Maybe you could put a big birthday cake up behind it and with your backdrop and yeah jump out of it or something <laughs> that's really good that's really good okay i will do that i will do that and by the way if our fans did not notice you have a lovely lovely background behind you that's really beautiful yes beautiful. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm sitting on top of the organ to uh, are you it. mm. it's almost real isn't it i know it is. That. it is that lo really looks nice it really does it's a good photograph too it's got a good uh clarity to it so well done 
Game on. So what's going on this week here? Wow. Where do you want to begin? So uh, let's see. Palm Sunday. First of all, I have I have praise moves on Saturday, so that's a good time to come out and stretch prior to the uh, to the week ahead and really just get soaked in God's word. And Palm Sunday on Sunday, right? Palm Sunday, and we yep. start outside. Start outside. Bidding, and uh, we will distribute palms for those that haven't been here before. We distribute palms outside and inside. You don't have to start outside. Yeah. Many of us start outside. We usually start down by the memorial garden in the parking lot. Yeah. We will have our resident uh, bagpiper. Ah, oh, so exciting. It's so Honors. moving. So moving. Yep. And uh, that's always fun. Yeah. Fun and loud. Oh. It's, it's really, it's so good. I, I just love that. And, you know, I was thinking, like, I don't know if you ever heard this story, but someone was telling me at coffee hour that... Um, I don't know if it was their nephew or something. One Palm Sunday, uh, it was a little boy, and he had a sore throat, and he didn't come home. From, he didn't go to church. He stayed home with somebody, right? Oh, yes, I know. Uh, yeah, do you know that? And when the rest of the family came home, they were carrying palm branches. Did you hear this story at coffee hour? I did. And then the little boy I was listening. Asked, I was listening <laughs> over your shoulder. <laughs> and the little boy asked what they were for, and his father told him that, they the people held them over Jesus's head when he walked by and then the little boy was so disappointed he said wouldn't you know it the Sunday I miss Jesus shows up That's very good. thanks Jim Hope we'll give you a we'll give right you a laugh track on that one would you please come on good delivery didn't say the punchline didn't say anything about disappointment nice. at the time moved it into coffee hour See, I'm trying. I'm working on it. All right, what else you got? Um, we'll go through Holy Week. Uh, so Palm Sunday is Sunday. And then Tenebrae is on Tuesday, Tuesday night at 7.30. That's a service that's um, candlelight. Beautiful. Scripture readings. Uh, but it's a very interesting service. If you haven't been there, you, it's worthwhile to come to that. Yeah. And uh, Wednesday, we have our normal Wednesday morning communion and healing service. 10 o'clock. Thursday is Maundy Thursday. Mm. And uh, that will be our the traditional Maundy Thursday liturgy. Maundy Thursday, of course, was the Last Supper. And uh, we do the foot washing and the stripping of the altar. And the other big thing that's going to be happening there for the first time in probably two years, we will be using a chalice for people that want to drink from the chalice. And uh, so if good. You want to, we will have all the other options available. Yep. But those that want to may. And uh, give a little history uh, using the cup. Okay. Cup was always the way to go. And when they had the flu pandemic back in 1918, 1919, that's when they started the little intincture cup. Oh. Uh, because people thought they were getting it from the common cup. But actually, that is false. Uh, there has never been a documented case of someone dying from drinking from the common cup. And you know that the media, who is anti-religion in general, would love to have found a case, one case that they could rub the church's nose in, but no one has ever found that. Wow. There's no documented case. And one of the reasons is the wine that we use is... Uh, well, port, port wine, and it's a higher alcohol content. Uh, it just it's like the CDCs. You know? just, that's going to be so killing germs, you know. Right. So and besides, amazing. they wipe the cup, and but that's up. That's everyone's personal preference. If you want in tank, you can. If you still want to get the wafer with the 
a wine dropped on it, you may. And if you don't, if you just want a wafer without any wine on it, that's fine too. Yeah, options. Starting on uh, Monday, Thursday, so that we can, when we get to Easter, everyone wants to be able to drink from the cup. So that's at 7.30, and uh, Good Friday is on Friday. It's funny how that works. Monday, Thursdays on Thursday, Good Friday is on Friday, Palm Sunday is on Sunday. Uh, so Good Friday, we have services at noon and 7.30. Those are the traditional Good Friday services. And for people that like to do the Stations of the Cross, we do that at 6.30 in the church for the 7.30 service. And then Holy Saturday at 7.30, we do the Great Vigil of Easter. And then on Easter, which is a week from Palm Sunday, we have three services, 7.30, 9, and 10.30. I'm just going to make an invitation here that um, years and years and years ago, like I had probably been someone who had gone to Easter service and maybe I'd fit one of the other services in during Holy Week. And then there was a year where I went to every service during Holy Week and then Easter Sunday. <clears throat> and it changed my Easter experience 100%. You just walked through all of it. And it was absolutely wonderful. So I, I invite you all, if you have not, come and do what you can. But if you can make a little bit extra of an effort, you just feel it all. And actually, my, my favorite service of the year is Monday, Thursday. I just think that the emotion of it all, just sitting there and, and praying afterwards, you know, just kind of in your mind's eye, seeing Jesus in the garden, like it's just so moving. The stripping of the altar, I think, is just incredibly moving, you know? <laughs> and then, then you've got the vigil, which just goes, ah, and then Easter Sunday. <laughs> that was funny? <laughs> no, you just reminded me of a funny thing that happened one... Uh, what was that? One Maundy Thursday. <laughs> So after the Maundy Thursday service, they leave the church open for people who want to pray. And uh, I decided I was going to stay. And I was probably there about an hour. Yep. And all the lights had been turned off, so it was just the outside spotlights. And, uh, yep. So I'm there praying, got my eyes shut. And, and this was about a good 45 minutes to an hour into it. And uh, sometimes when you pray a lot, you kind of get into another zone. And all of a sudden, I hear this voice go, Jose, Jose. And I'm like, what? It sounds like God talking to me. Jose, it's like, my name's David, you know, it's not Jose. <laughs> and it was quiet for a while. And then I hear it again, Jose. I open my eyes. And we had a sexton at the time, but there was a family. Yep. And he had come up not realizing that there was anyone in the church. He was sitting on the organ bench, and his son named Jose was down the hall in the classroom. He was called. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, that's that bizarre, was bizarre, yeah. That's funny. It was... Because it's surreal. It's just very oh, yeah. different. Yeah. But... I thought God knew me by name, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I guess I guess He didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was just double checking. He just want to make sure he yeah, that you heard His voice. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Well, anyway, we hope to see as many as we possibly can. And the Easter Vigil, in and of itself, is is a wonderful, wonderful service. Also, um, you just go through the baptismal stuff, and just great. The readings are wonderful. So. Come, come as you can, but um, the invitation is there for everyone. So good. Excellent. And um, what else? I mean, like that, that's, that's probably good to leave it there. You don't want to go past Easter. Yes, I think we should stop there. Yeah. Excellent. I'll give you one little thing here. Okay. 
Hey, we have a, a pancake here. A pancake? We have a pancake that just walked into the, here. The pancake likes treats. The pancake has to guess what hand they're in. The pancake always guesses wrong. Wait, who, who or what is Pancake? This is Pancake. Oh, hi, sweet. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hello, sweet. <laughs> You're pretty heavy. Oh, my gosh. Where is he, in the office? Yes. Oh, it's so funny. He didn't guess the treat right? Pancake. Oh that's, so <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, what a sweet. Does he come in all the time? It's a Tuesday time. Oh, nice. That's cute. Well, well let me give you, um, so one thing that relates to, uh, to Holy Week. Um, yep. So all the people that go on our Israel trips, uh, you know, we visit lots of sites. But yep. Biggest one, uh, or one that everyone pretty much there's unanimous agreement on is when we go to the Mount of Olives. Yep. And you get the spectacular uh, view of the city. Yep. But we visit a lot of the sites on the Mount of Olives, but as you walk down the Mount of Olives, you're pretty much taking the exact road that the Palm Sunday procession would have taken place. Wow. wow. What does that feel like? Is that amazing? I mean, it's just kind of, <laughs> I mean, you really know you're walking where Jesus walked. Maybe not on, I mean, it wasn't cobblestone at the time. No, but. Uh, you're going, you know that that's the route that. Wow. Oh, I just got. That road that's didn't, they don't, it's not like it's a straight road. It's kind of a creepy road down the hill. Mm. So you're actually walking where that procession went. And they. Mm. Every year on Palm Sunday, they reenact that walk. So. How powerful. Thank you for sharing those those tidbits from your trips, too. It brings it to life for those of us who haven't made the trip yet. It really does, especially this time of year. It must be so amazing. So I'll give you two little things here. All right, let's go. Wrap up. One was uh, at coffee hour last week. Uh, you know, the kids played on the far corner there with all the toys. Well, uh, Max Kronberg's daughter picked up a drum and was drumming away on it, having a grand old time. And uh, we had a couple pictures of her. I wanted to use it in sore points, but uh, I was really kind of hesitant because of the you know, repercussions. Ah! I got that ahead of time. I, I was ready for that. That, th those claps are like, yay, yay. Uh, can I get an applause for that one? Yay, sure. yay, yay, yay. Okay, go. What else you got? And I will give you one more story. All right. So one year when we were in Israel, we were with uh, Sandy Cholesky. <clears throat> yeah. With a former parishioner who's moved to Florida, but still watches us all the time online. Sandy's son works for Pepsi. And uh, so every time we would go to a restaurant, she'd like order Pepsi because she wanted to get a, a Pepsi bottle that said Pepsi in Hebrew on it. Oh, wow. And uh, so she finally got that in one of our restaurants up on the Sea of Galilee. And when we got to the old city in Jerusalem, she wanted to buy a, uh, a t-shirt that said Pepsi Cola and said Pepsi in, in Hebrew. And I mean, you basically all the sports teams, you can get Yankee shirts, let's say New York Yankees in Hebrew, whatever. You can get any team you want. You can get any any logo you want. She's going around and we spent a couple of days. She could not find a Pepsi shirt. So on one of our last days there, I'm walking along with her. She kind of complained to one of the store owners. She said, you got these Coca-Cola shirts and all these shirts. I want a Pepsi shirt. He said, come with me, I'll make you a shirt. So we went back a couple shirts and a couple stores. And I had a shirt screen printing machine there. 
So he goes on his computer, Googles Pepsi, and he, all these logos came up. And he had her pick the logo that she wanted. Then he typed Pepsi Cola in Hebrew and he put it underneath and he made up this t-shirt for, for, for Sandy's son. So Sandy's like on seventh heaven. So, so we catch up with our group, which had gone ahead. And uh, they were a little annoyed because we held them up a little bit. Sandy was so excited. She's telling them about this Pepsi shirt that she made. So our tour guide, who uh, speaks Hebrew and can read Hebrew, says, can I see that shirt? So she pulls it out, she's all happy. And the guide's looking at it and he goes, what did, what did that store owner tell you that says? And she's pointing along, she said, it says Pepsi Cola in Hebrew. And you see Sandy starting to get a little worried. He goes, he told you that, huh? Now, Sandy, if you got to uh, just kind of imagine one of those cartoons where someone's starting to get mad and they like turn into a thermometer and you get <laughs> mercury going up. Well, yeah. that's Sandy. Sandy's starting to get a little red, you know, to where she's ready to explode. And the guy's looking and he goes, he told you that says Pepsi Cola, huh? And Sandy goes, well, what does it say? He goes, well, that says Coca-Cola. Hebrew. And Sandy's like, right? Sandy's like grabbing the shirt. She's ready to go back and kill the store owner. She's ready to leave. The guy goes, April Fools. Oh my God. April 1st. Oh my oh, God. I have, that was probably my all time favorite April Fools. Book. Wow. That one is hard to beat. That one is hard to beat. Oh my God. He did a great job. Oh, poor Sandy. <laughs> she must have been. <laughs> oh my gosh, Sandy. Oh gosh. Sorry, but I I felt you during that story. Oh my gosh, that was a good one. That's hard to beat. That's great. Excellent. Well, Dave, thank you so much. It's been awesome sauce, and we will see everybody. So everyone week. have a blessed rest of the week, and we will see you on Palm Sunday. And we will journey through Holy Week with you. We will. Amen. Bye, everybody. So, so, so. Is it? I don't know. It seems like some kind of time warp.